to the video. I thought it's been quite a long time since we did a setup tour, so why not show you everything that I'm using at the moment to stream. There's quite a lot of gear, so I'm trying to try and go through every piece individually and show you how it sort of works in my setup, show you how it all comes together. Uh, but most importantly, the reason I'm doing the setup video is because we finally have a two PC stream setup, thanks to the guys at Novatech. So thank you so much, Novatech. They sent us a lovely parcel the other day. Uh, inside this parcel, there were some goodies from Asus, including uh, a new mouse, keyboard, and headset. And also, the most important part, of course, uh, they sent me a brand new gaming PC rig, and it is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to show you this new rig, go through all of the specs, and then I'm gonna show you the rest of the setup as well and show you, I suppose, just let you know what I use to stream. So first things first, we'll talk about the gaming rig. It's the newest addition to the setup and it is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, might be slightly biased. It's the nicest looking PC I've ever seen. It's the Rain Sentry Lux. Rain have their own brand within Novatech. So it's actually one of their sort of lines of gaming PCs. And this one is their Sentry version. And within that is the Lux version of the Sentry uh, gear. So inside this, we've got, uh, it's, it's pretty chunky as PCs go. Um, it's the 10th generation Intel i7 10700K CPU. Uh, so that's the latest generation of Intel CPUs. Uh, the HyperX Fury 32 gig DDR4 RAM. Asus GeForce RTX 2080 Super Graphics Card. The Asus ROG Strix Z490 motherboard. Uh, we've got the Asus ROG Thor 850 watt modular power supply unit. Uh, Kingston 500 gig SSD for the operating system and then an additional HyperX Fury uh, RGB <laughs> SSD for my games. Uh, and then on top of that, just, you know, in case that's not enough, a four terabyte Seagate Barracuda hard drive. So that's where I personally, as this is only for gaming, that's where I'm just archiving my big games. So games like The Witcher, uh, maybe Call of Duty, stuff that I'm not playing regularly at the moment. Uh, archive it onto the hard drive and then I can just transfer it over to the SSD when I want to play it regularly. Um, on top of that, we've got the NZXT Kraken X63 water cooling, which is uh, also the fans you'll see at the front of the case. Um, and the NZXT H510 Elite Compact ATX Mid Tower, which is the case itself, which I actually love because if you're looking side on at the case, I'm looking at it now. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. If you're looking side on at the case, you can, there's just space in there. It all looks so clean and spacious. And obviously that's partly due to the fantastic cable management that Novatech have done. But it's just the, partly the case as well. The case has just got a really nice aesthetic design. And that is helped a lot by the color profile I've got on the uh, RGB sort of uh, setup. So at the moment, I've got it for like a, a white color profile. So it all looks just really clean and, and, and just glowing a little bit without being like super oops, oops, oops. As much as I do like oops, oops, RGB, as you can tell, uh, sometimes it's nice to have something a bit cleaner looking. So big fan of that. Thank you again to the guys at Novatech for sending that over. Um, that was gifted to me by them. Just want to make that clear. Um, and you can buy this exact model for yourself if you follow the link in the description to this video. So my streaming PC uh, that I've got now was actually the PC that was doing the streaming and the gaming up until this week. Uh, so that one, it's been a bit of a workhorse. Uh, that was originally gifted to me by Asus. Uh, they built it custom for me about three or four years ago now. Um, so the reason I've upgraded to a two PC setup and, and asked Novatech to work with me on this is that I've been trying to upgrade my stream setup uh, over the last year and it's got to the point now where the one one rig is struggling a little bit with all the demands I'm throwing at it. I've got uh, a, a pretty chunky webcam with a 4K capture. I've got uh, obviously the capture card. I've got a lot of video sources on OBS now and a lot of browser sources. Uh, and on top of uh, trying to encode and stream, it's also trying to play games at a decent quality without dipping below sort of like 60 frames. That was turning out as the sort of months go by, it was becoming more and more difficult to get a good quality stream out uh, just based on all the stuff I kept throwing at it. So uh, it was better to have a two PC setup so that one PC has all the load of the encoding and actually making the stream work and look good. And one PC is just making the game look good. So I have a really good smooth gaming experience. I'm not frustrated by constant frame drops or, you know, like uh, just <laughs> really annoying game moments where you just lag for a microsecond and die. Um, so I'm not plagued by that anymore, which is fantastic. And it means that the stream I'm outputting is the highest quality it can be. 
So inside that streaming rig, there is an Asus Strix 1080 Ti. There's an AMD Ryzen 1800X CPU. There's an Asus ROG Crosshair 6 Hero MOBO. Uh, there's a 16 gig of HyperX Fury RAM. There's the Cooler Master Master Liquid 20 Pro Liquid Cooler and a hybrid SSD as well. And I also installed a secondary SSD just for games on there too. So uh, I like to have an SSD for the operating system and then an SSD just for games where I can. So the new gaming PC is connected via HDMI to the internal capture card on my streaming PC. So I'm using the Elgato Game Capture HD60 Pro. Might upgrade that in the future to a 4K version, but for now it's working perfectly fine, so not too bothered. Um, that's connected directly via HDMI, um, and then that's mirrored uh, on the gaming PC. The display is mirrored onto the capture card. Um, I had to adjust some settings in OBS just to kind of stop a bit of delay between uh, what I'm seeing in my game and what is actually appearing on OBS. Uh, I can't remember what settings they were, but now it is almost completely synced up. There's like a few milliseconds out, but for the most part, it is uh, completely synced uh, to real life, which is pretty good. So the webcam that I use, as you can see here, uh, this webcam is the Sony A6000. I bought this a few months back. Uh, it's working perfectly well for me. I use uh, that alongside a Elgato Camlink 4K. Uh, so that goes into the back of the streaming PC. Um, and that that's... It, works perfectly i've never really had an issue with it um the sony a6000 as you can see you get a nice depth of field in the background there are cameras that will get you a better depth of field uh, by which i mean you know if you want to see more blur in the background you want to see less detail back there um that depends mostly on your lens to be honest and if you want a camera that does that i'd recommend looking at ones that have like interchangeable lenses uh but this one works perfectly fine as you can see the quality is really good uh it just generally it never provides an issue for me so I use that with a dummy battery so that it can constantly be on and I try and make sure I switch it off and take the battery out when I'm not using it so it doesn't uh, stay warm. My microphone is still the Audio-Technica 2035. I've been using this microphone for uh, almost five years now. Uh, in fact, yeah, it must be five years now, which is crazy. Uh, I might upgrade this in the future. I'm thinking about getting one of these Shure microphones, but for now, this works fine. No reason for me to really need an upgrade other than I'm kind of like the look of the Shure. <laughs> but um, this is the AT2035 XLR mic. It's a cardioid condenser mic, and it's attached to the Rode mic arm, which again, I've had this one for about three years now. Um, it's great. I would 100% recommend if you're getting a mic arm, I would recommend the Rode one specifically. I had a knockoff Rode arm. It's like a cheap 30 pounds mic arm off Amazon. It didn't work very well. And after, I don't know, after a few months, it was already sort of flailing all over the place, drooping. This, I haven't had a single issue with drooping. Like it's when you adjust it, it stays where it's supposed to. And that's, that's the bare minimum you should expect from a mic arm, but with the cheaper ones, they do tend to go a bit wild. Um, so yeah, I would, if don't skimp out on the arm is one thing I'd say. And then on top of the mic, we just have a, a real basic pop filter that I bought years ago as well. So the microphone plugs into my Go XLR. Now the Go XLR is something, again, I bought, it wasn't gifted to me. Um, and I think it's one of my favorite pieces of kit in my entire setup. It is so, so convenient. Uh, as a streamer, even just as somebody who is on the PC all the time as a gamer, I find it really, really convenient. Um, so what essentially the Go XLR does is it, it creates, and this might be technically wrong, but this is my understanding of it. Um, it creates audio channels uh, on your PC in your sound settings. So you can assign your programs to those channels. So for example, Spotify on my PC is assigned to my music channel on uh that that the go xlr has created inside my sound settings so you can do that manually yourself you can set your programs to manually be assigned to these channels uh from the go xlr and then those channels can be assigned to sliders on your go xlr and also in the actual uh, software menu of the go xlr there's uh, a bunch of sliders there as well uh, there's only four physical sliders on the front of it shouldn't really need more than four sometimes i wish i had five uh, but usually four is just about fine um and it just means that you have micro control over everything at uh you know at a glance you don't have to be going and digging into menus you don't have to adjust uh, like individually i used to have to adjust my game sound individually i don't have to do that now all of my game is rooted through 
one channel and then i just adjust that one slider so i don't have to go into overwatch and adjust my game to 60 percent and then go into destiny and do the same it's all really really easy and streamlined and yeah really love it it's got a sampler so i can have uh, weird voice effects and record those uh, sort of mini voice lines if i want to if i want to and it's really really convenient uh just for streaming and, and doing goofy bits and having a swear button <laughs> and one of my favorite functions is actually the mute setting so there's uh, physical mute buttons underneath the sliders um and i can set the mute button if i want to when i press it it will just mute the microphone entirely to any source on the pc but i can also set that so that it mutes it directly in discord so that when i press the button i can still talk on stream and discord can't hear me which is really handy or alternatively, uh, it could be the other way around. Um, I can set it so that it mutes in stream, but Discord can still hear me. So that is uh, really useful for a variety of reasons um, and is probably one of my low-key favorite features. <laughs> That's really sad. So my gaming PC is connected to the GoXLR with a 3.5 mil line out cable. So it goes out from the audio port on my gaming PC and straight into the GoXLR. And that uh, automatically is assigned to the line out channel on my PC, which I have assigned to one of my sliders, which means that uh, really easily, if I want to, I can just mute my entire PC by sliding it down. And if I really want fine control over the audio on my gaming PC, then I can go into the volume control panel on there and just mute certain things if I want to, um, but I can mute the entire system uh, via the GoXLR. So at the moment I'm using these Bose uh, earphones. I was using an Audio-Technica headset, which I loved, uh, but you know, I like to change things around every now and then. These Bose earphones are the most comfortable earphones I've ever owned. And this isn't a sales point. I bought these as well, and I've had them for five years. These exact pair for five years and they haven't broken, which for me, is a bloody miracle um i don't know i'm just finding in-ear earphones just more comfortable right now so that's the only reason i'm really using them <laughs> i just go back and forth i also use a stream deck that is connected directly via usb to my streaming pc i think that was gifted but i can't quite remember so i'm going to assume it was gifted for the sake of caution um i don't use the stream deck to its max potential in all honesty i think it's um I, I probably waste the potential a bit. The things you can do with that Stream Deck these days are nuts. And I'm not going to use this as an advert for Stream Deck because I think we've seen, you know, uh, most people who are into streaming kind of know how good the Stream Deck can be. Uh, I use that to switch between all my scenes, as you can see here. Uh, and it's, it's just really convenient, really. I can use it for anything. It's great. And it just gets more and more features as time goes on. More and more is added to it. More integrations with GoXLR, with Twitch. Um, and I really use it quite basically with just hotkeys for the most part but um yeah recommend heavily uh, for lighting i use a ring light that i bought off amazon it's a, a new ear brand something like that new newer i don't know uh it's just a basic ring light um i just use it on the lowest setting it just provides a bit of fill light um and then i have these two lights behind me that provide a bit of color and just make the room look a bit more interesting so i've got a blue one on this side and the pink one here this everyone keeps asking me about this light so i thought i might as well mention it um i bought this from john lewis it's a tripod lamp like a standing tripod lamp or something like that um i bought it last year don't know if they still sell them and it's got a philips hue bulb in there as well so i can control the lights with my phone the beauty of a fill light uh, as well is if you have a light in front of you as long as it's not overpowering your face too much it helps separate you from the background nicely as well which i think is quite important in streaming because uh you know if we go to like this scene uh, as you can see, when you're quite small, it's quite important to be able to pick yourself out from your own background uh, so you're not sort of lost inside your own small webcam. So now onto monitors. My two side monitors are gifted by Asus. They are the MG278. Uh, I've had them for years. They've been great. Uh, cheers, Asus. <laughs> They're connected via HDMI into my streaming rig. The middle monitor, the big chunky boy, is the Asus XG32V. It's curved. Uh, it's 32 inches. It's bloody gorgeous. It's really perfect for like immersive story games. Um, again, I, I do find it a little bit too big for FPS games, so I might look to downgrade a little bit in the future just because, uh, generally speaking, I think FPS games, and I think it's quite a common thought, uh, they're better on a smaller monitor. They just, it's, it's a bit easier to play effectively on a smaller monitor and be able to see everything around you. Um, with that said, uh, I'd love this monitor and I don't want to see it go <laughs> because I really, really like it. Um, thank you again, Asus. They did gift me this a few years back. And this middle curved monitor is connected via DisplayPort cable directly to my gaming PC. 
I also have an HDMI uh, out connected to it, which I, at the moment, I just use for my ring fit for my Switch. Um, but I use that for console sometimes as well. And side note, I know if you see a wide picture of the monitors, they look a little bit wonky. Um, that's just because they're set up for when I'm looking at them right now, when I'm sat in front of them, I set my monitors up so that I can access all the information as quickly as I can without having to turn my head a lot. Uh, a bit overdramatic, but you get the idea. Um, I try and place them in such a way where I can see everything I need to see properly. Um, and they are kind of angled <laughs> to suit where I'm sat rather than angles so that it all look straight and neat because I don't really worry too much about that. I'm more worried about what the experience is like when I'm sat streaming every day. Um, and the right side monitor, as you can see, is actually portrait. Uh, so it's a vertical monitor. And this is for chat mostly. I like the idea of, or not the idea, I like actually having chat down one side so I can see like a lot of chat at one time. Um, that is my personal preference, especially when discussion starts getting really good on stream and lots of people have some really good opinions and I really want to see all of them. And I hate it when stuff scrolls off screen and I have to scroll back. So this means that it's uh, really easy for me to see a lot of, of talk at the same time. And also it means that I'm not having to turn my head too much to see any extra information. So, cause this screen is where I have discord and like stream labels and stuff. So keeps it all in one place. So the first mouse is connected to the streaming PC. It's the mouse that was gifted to me by Novatech. Uh, it's the Asus ROG Pugio 2. Don't know how you pronounce that. Uh, it's an RGB mouse. It's actually ambidextrous, which is uh, interesting to note, even though I am myself right-handed. Might be good for you to know. Um, and by which I mean it's got buttons on both sides, so it's it's not um, sort of biased to one side of hand-holding. Um, so I just use that for my streaming PC. And for the gaming PC, I use the Logitech G Pro Wireless. I'm not going to show you too close up of my mouse because it's kind of gross. It gets grimy real quick. <laughs> um, but the Logitech G Pro Wireless is it's a really lightweight, uh, good mouse. And I use that with the wireless charging mouse mat as well, um, which means that it's as it sits on the mouse mat, it's actually charging, um, which is really useful for me because I forget to charge things all the time. So it's kind of necessary. Um, but yes, would recommend that. At first, I was kind of put off it, in all honesty, because it's so lightweight, it's so small. I kind of was like, I don't know, it's a bit, it's a bit cheap, doesn't it? But then I started using it, and I realized how good it was. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, don't judge your mouse by its size or something. <laughs> so, one keyboard I've got is the Corsair K70. Um, I love this keyboard. It's gorgeous. It's at the moment, the videos that you're probably seeing on screen have the default color profile on because for some reason it's reverted to the default. But uh, the customizability for the color profile is really nice. Um, it, it, I don't know, I just really like the look of this keyboard and it plays fantastically and, you know, mechanical keyboards are mwah. So uh, this one, I haven't quite decided yet. I have just ordered a new keyboard, which should be arriving at some point today. I've ordered the Anna Pro 2. So one of these will be used for my stream and one of them will be used for my gaming PC. Um, I've, the Anne Pro 2 I ordered is a 60% keyboard, which means it's much smaller than a sort of a regular full-size keyboard. Uh, and I got that one deliberately because I wanted a short form keyboard so that it wasn't taking up loads of desk space. Um, the reason I've got two keyboards and two mice, um, so a lot of people recommend using a piece of software called Synergy, which is what I am using uh, at the moment. It's really good for, I think, general usage. Uh, what it lets you do is it essentially creates a server on your main PC and then you connect to that from your secondary PC and it lets you share your mouse and keyboard across both desktops. It's actually really sick. Um, the, I've had a few issues with it, uh, so that's the reason I'm using two mice and two keyboards going forward. Uh, namely, <laughs> so for some reason, when I press the number eight, when I use Synergy, it the button doesn't work. The number eight key is busted for some reason with synergy it acts like a keybind and i can't figure out why because i don't have any keybind set so i'm not sure what's going on there but it does mean that usually if i'm on my gaming desktop it switches me back to my streaming desktop which is really inconvenient uh if you're in the middle of a game for example and you just suddenly it's like being alt tabbed it's really not ideal on top of that i've been using two mice from the get-go because when i tried to use my desktop mouse from my stream pc with synergy on the gaming pc it just wouldn't work. It was going crazy. It was uh, very, it was completely unusable. So uh, I found that it, the Synergy mouse connection works perfectly on the desktop and in applications. But when you're gaming, it doesn't seem to work properly. Not sure if that's a reason for that. Um, 
but I'd rather just use two separate mice. As I said, there might be solutions to these problems that I've just not found, but uh, I just think it's better just to have two keyboards and two mice. So that's what I'm doing going forward. Um, but Synergy does have one really cool function, which I will miss. Uh, you can actually copy paste from one desktop to another. So even though they're two completely separate PCs, I can copy something from my gaming PC, like a link, and then paste it over to my streaming PC, which is very helpful. <laughs> I will miss that. Right, moving on. Finally, we've got uh, the Bose sound link, which you will see in the back of my monitors. Um, I just use that. I'll be honest, mostly I use that when I use my Switch. So if I'm playing on my Switch, uh, specifically when I'm doing Ring Fit, which is what I'm doing at the moment to try and get exercise, um, I just use the sound link to get sound. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it's a really good Bluetooth speaker. I've had it for years now. Uh, works really well. I bought it. Um, that's it. <laughs> My chair is a Noble chair. They've given me a chair and a footrest very kindly. So those were gifted to me by Noble chairs. Uh, I've got the black and red hero chair. Um, it's the most comfortable gaming chair I've ever had. And I know you'll be expecting me to say that because they gifted it to me. But I'm being completely honest. It is the best gaming chair I've ever had. My desk was also gifted to me by Halberd Desks. They're a UK based desk manufacturer. Um, it's the thing that I particularly like about this desk um, and is what drew me to talk to them in the first place is the depth because I found a lot of desks in well not in the UK but generally a lot of desks just aren't deep enough for gaming um, so they you know by the time you've got monitors sat there and you've got your mouse and keyboard and especially if you're an arm mouse user <laughs> you're gonna really struggle for uh, desk space so uh, this desk is really deep and I've got one of their biggest desks as well and it is uh it's so sturdy uh, this is an electronic one so it does move up and down uh with the touch of a button which is it's great i don't use that function often because all my cables are quite tightly uh, connected but as desks go this is probably the best desk i have ever had for gaming it's huge it everything fits on it perfectly fine never felt like it's going to collapse or anything like that um would really recommend halberd desks if you want a good gaming desk now i know one thing that i'm probably going to get comments on is cable management so I, i've kind of come to the conclusion that no matter what you do your cables will not be managed in a stream setup it's just not possible they i've got too many proprietary cables i've got too many molded cables for example in the stream deck that they're just short so trying to get them from a to b in a way that looks nice is nigh on impossible i'm gonna give it another bash at some point because it is bothering me a little bit too but w with moving stuff in and out all the time, it's so difficult to get a nice cable management going with a setup like this. It's, you know, like, I, I've, if you look at the diagram, you'll see how many cables, and that doesn't include power cables. And obviously, power cables are, I think, the worst offenders. Uh, they are just everywhere. So each, every single thing on this desk has a power cable as well. Um, so, you know, you do what you can, but go easy on the cable management for me. <laughs> I don't, I live in a rented apartment and uh, there's just too many cables to manage at this point. So, you know, I try and keep them all clumped together as much as I can, but it's, uh, I don't want to have to go and buy another, I uh, spend a hundred quid on cables because it's, you know, I need new HDMI cables, new long ones, new, I just, I can't bother. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Don't make me. So that is my whole PC setup, or not even just my PC setup, my whole stream setup. Thank you once again to Novatech for gifting me this beautiful gaming PC. If you do want to get one for yourself, you can do by following the link in the description. Uh, it's a chunky boy, uh, but I mean, I've had it for a week now. I've been testing it out, running games. I haven't had a single issue with any game, as you would hope. Um, but it is, it is gorgeous and... Uh, yeah, the guys at Novatech are fantastic. So thank you once again to them for that. And uh, thank you to everybody else who has contributed to the setup. Uh, Elgato in particular, Asus especially as well. Um, they've all provided some of the gear here and uh, they've been fantastic to me over the years. So thank you so much, guys. Um, if you have any particular questions you want answering about my setup, please feel free to ask. I will not be... I, I can't do diagnostics for your setup. You know, if you have a setup that's not working properly for you, uh, there's, there's not much I can do to fix your own setup, um, but hopefully seeing the diagram of mine and seeing how mine all connects helps you a little bit. Um, I would recommend the Twitch subreddit is usually a good place to go to for advice on that kind of thing. Uh, and there's plenty of resources online as well. Uh, for example, GoXLR have a, a really good set of tutorial videos that really um, easily help you set up your GoXLR properly and, and help you figure out any issues. And their Discord server is very good as well. 
Um, but yes, thank you so much for watching the setup video. Feel free to ask any questions down in the comments below and I'll try and get them answered for you. Check me out on Twitch. I am live four days a week at the moment, Monday to Thursday around 6 p.m. British time. Um, and yeah, take care of yourselves. Thank you again for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.